Hello, hello everyone. It is Jackie with Pocket of Preschool and I'm super excited you're here with me tonight. So tonight we are talking all about the teacher binder. So go ahead and pop in the comments and let me know, do you use a teacher binder? Do you use um, a, a digital teacher binder? Do you not know what a teacher binder is? Um, so while everybody's popping that in, I wanna tell you what's at the top of this post. So at the top of this post, you're gonna find a link to my teacher binder on TPT and it's completely edit editable. And then you're also gonna find um, a link to all of the things I'm gonna use tonight, like the um, happy planner rings and the punch and the pens and all of the things that you will need to make your own teacher binder. So after teaching for 12 years, I feel like I just always need a teacher binder to kind of get all my thoughts together, keep all my lesson plans in one place, and then it's just easy for me to find, or if I'm gone, it's easy for um, my uh, my team to find if um, they need you know to know what's on the lesson plans for that day. I'm gonna um, just jump in and kind of show you what's inside, um, how to use it, and then um, how to make it. My teacher binder, I so typically you can use make your teacher binder a couple different ways. Um, you can use a three ring binder, which is what I've used in the past. Um, you can make your teacher binder and take it to like Office Max and have it bound there. Um, but when you have it bound at an office store or any kind of like ring system, um, that's you can't really take pages in or out. So this year I'm trying these Happy Planner rings and um, because you can tear the pages out and you can put them back in. Super easy, but it's still pretty um, versatile and it's not as bulky as a three ring binder. So to make the teacher binder, what you're gonna need if you wanna use um, happy planner rings are the happy planner rings. So they are they have hearts in them. You can get them at Michael's. Um, these are the big rings. So they come in this little box and um, you need 11 of them. Um, so um, they're, they're linked to the top of this post on Amazon or you can buy them at Michael's with your coupon. Um, but these are the big, they're like one and a half inch. Um, but if you want a smaller teacher binder, they do make them smaller. Just make sure you buy um, 11 because some of the packs only come with nine because some people make their binders shorter. Um, if they do like a lot of life planners and things too, the, the Happy Planner company does. So um, yeah, so just figure out which ones you want. Just make sure you buy 11 because some of the packs, like I said, have nine and then you'll need a couple more. Um, but if you want to use Happy Planner rings, you're also going to need this happy planner punch and I want to say it was like 30 bucks you can buy it at Michaels and use your coupon and your teacher discount but it has a whole bunch of holes and it works just like a regular hole punch except it um, hole punches just for these I'm just gonna take a couple pages and show you kind of how to use the punch um, so there's little lines on the happy planner punch so that kind of tells you like where to put it because there's no um, like stopping point you know some um, hole punches have like a stopper that doesn't have this on this so you have to make sure you put your paper in where the lines are um, and you can only do like I think it says what is it saying here three sheets at a time if you're gonna use cardstock do one sheet at a time if you're using a laminated page like I did for my cover um, you're gonna wanna put it in and then punch it like two or three times in a row and it'll go through. Um, just don't take it out and then try and repunch it because it'll rip. Um, so I just have some pages right here and I'll try and show you guys standing it up a little bit and you just put it, it just works just like a regular hole punch. I think you guys can kind of see. It would help if I put it the right way. <laughs> so you just kind of put it in and then you line it up on the lines. And then you have this little little edge so which is super nice and then what you do is you just assemble it and it is it I'm not gonna lie it does it took me a little bit of time um, it took me a little bit of time to um, assemble it so but once you assemble it it's done for the um, the entire year so I'll kind of walk you through um, oh the designs let me show you that really quick so um, in my teacher binder pack, there are a whole bunch of different designs. Like if there's some rainbow designs, if you love rainbow like me. Um, so there's like a rainbow design, there's like a vertical and a horizontal. And then, so you will get a cover and then you'll get a binder spine in case you wanna do a three ring binder and then you'll get divider tabs. 
And these again are all editable if you want, or they come as a PDF, so you can just print them as well. Um, but the I'll show you how to make the um, the tabs in just a second. And then I added back covers. There's also a dot, rainbow dot, and there's also a small rainbow dot. And then there's like a rainbow watercolor. So I know some of you guys are using some watercolors. Um, themed classrooms and then there is a oops there's the there's the back cover there's like a watercolor flower that's I know super trendy right now there's some traditional teacher designs like like here's a paper design and then here's the back cover and then here's like a traditional apple and then there's also um, I think there's like five black and white designs there's like a black and white polka dot and then there's a small polka dot and then there's a black and white watercolor as well so pick out the cover you want and you can either edit them or not edit them. It's kind of up to you. And then the front and the back cover I laminated and then I just cut it out um, right along that page line. Um, so I just cut it right out along that page line. I didn't cut it um, on, I didn't cut this white border off because then it was smaller than um, the pages. So do the cover and the back. Um, on cardstock and then laminate it. And then the dividers, I just did regular cardstock and I didn't laminate them. So you can see all my colors and you can put rainbow in the middle if you're a rainbow person or I just did mine, um, each, each section, different colors, as you can see. And then for the tabs, what you're gonna do, let me find my tabs, okay. So you're gonna, um, actually what you wanna do, so I, I did this a little bit backwards. This is kind of a learning curve for me. So, um, cause I've never made the tabs before. So um, what I would do is I would cut these circles out, laminate them, and then cut them out again. Um, because I've been carrying this around this week cause I am at the amazing TPT conference learning all kinds of fun new tricks for to make teacher resources for you guys and they're just getting a little um, beat up in my teacher bag. So I would cut, laminate, and then cut. And then you can edit them or not edit them. It's totally up to you. And you can change the fonts too. Um, you don't have to use the font that I have. You can use whatever font that you love. Um, and to do, so once you cut out the divider tabs, all you do is you literally tape it to the back. And I just use regular scotch tape like the clear pack, not the thick packing tape, but like the thin, like wrapping paper um, tape. Oops, sorry. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, I just taped it on the front. And then I did put a piece of tape, um, you can kind of see it, this shiny, um, on the front and then on the back. That way I have my little tabs. So yeah. Oh, and when you're assembling it, put your cover on, print your, um, Print your cover and and then print your dividers and put all your tabs on print all your inside pages and then put it in order and then hole punch it because like you're gonna want to punch the opposite side for um, the back cover that way otherwise it would be on this side right so you want to make sure you put it all together and then flip through it to make sure everything's on the right side before you hole punch. Um, and then there's a couple different ways you can do your lesson plans. It kind of just depends on how you like them. So, um, like when I taught um, five days a week, this is kind of how I had my lesson plan. So I would have my centers on the front kind of as a start the week. Um, yes, so somebody asked, um, are the inside pages Regular paper, yeah. So the inside pages are just regular paper. And then it opens up and you can see <laughs> the weekly view. And then this is all, again, everything in here is editable. Um, so you can edit it, put your own schedule in, and there's different um, layouts. So there's also a layout where you can put your schedule across the top and then days of the week down the side. And there's different amounts of um, tap, like columns and all of that um, good stuff too. But this is an, a one reason why it's really important to assemble it before you hole punch it. That way you make sure your lesson plans open up the way you want. And then on the back, 
so just so I didn't, um, I had a kind of a back page. What I would always do, and we were always required to do um, weekly reflections and lessons and kind of like a little bit of planning to show why we were, why we were going to do what we were going to do the next week. So why are we doing a letter, why are we doing this letter game? Because Billy needs some more letter work, um, you know, things like that. Like we played this game and I noticed that Billy was having trouble with the letter R and F. So I would write those things down on my, um, on my observation and reflection page and it's literally on the back of my lesson plan. So it wasn't anywhere else I had to go find it. Um, yeah, so it was right there and I could just write it down that way when I'm planning for the next week I have um, some things to help me with my planning. So that way make sure my planning is purposeful and it's not just some random thing I'm throwing together just because that's what I liked. Well, you know, it's what I did last year. You want to make your planning purposeful and um, tailored to your kiddos every year. Um, somebody's asking, um, is this in the curriculum? Yes, this is in the big curriculum. It's in the decor pack. Um, and um, it's also at the top of this post if you want to just buy just the teacher binder. So the link is at the top of this post. Now, one thing I love about, oh, let me tell you one more trick. So, like next year, I'm teaching, um, and I taught last year too, I taught half day. So what I did was I put my center page on the front and then on the back. I only teach three days a week. I teach Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So I didn't need that extra page. Um, so I just have um, a Monday, a Wednesday, and a Friday spot. And what I like to do is um, just tear it out. And look, it just tears out nice and simple and then you can um, pop it, just pop it right back in like after you're done the next week. And look at that, it's just popped right back in. It's not hard, it's not ruined. Um, Cause what I did, what I do actually, is I pop it out for the week and I actually um, take like a magnet clip and I magnet this um, right by my teacher stand at circle time. That way I have it, everybody in the, all my team knows where it is, because I take my teacher binder um, home with me at night, or so you know how your teacher bag stays in the car <laughs> a lot, I would, you know, it would stay with me in the car, but um, when I taught full day, the staff was, um, my team was still there, so I'd keep this, and it would be um, in the same place every day, that way if I had a, there was a sub, um, you guys, everybody could still teach, even though I wasn't there, because they knew what to do, um, so that way they had lesson plans, and it was good to go. Oh, sorry, <laughs> reading a comment. So yeah, so these pages, if you use the Happy Planner rings, you can pull them out really easily and it just pops right back in. So you just, super, super simple. Or like, let's say you totally mess up your lesson plans and you wanna redo them, tear it out and throw it away. Um, if you wanna, if you, maybe you have to turn in your lesson plans every week, so maybe you, um, this is also um, in PowerPoint so you can type them in and then maybe you have to like send them to your admin or something so you can type them in, print it, hole punch it, and then just plop it right in your lesson plan binder. That way um, you can send it in and you can type it if you wanna type it, um, and then you can just pop it in and it's not like bound in an, in an office store to where you're stuck and you, you know, or maybe you run out of lesson plans or maybe your schedule changes like halfway through the year. Cause sometimes, you know, with kiddos, like our schedule changes, you know, they're really hungry this year. I have to move snack up or you know whatever it might be so you know you're gonna have to you know toss out these lesson plans because you have a different schedule or something crazy things happen in the classroom you never know um so what are happy planner rings they're just these disc rings and they're literally in this little box that's it super simple um so that's what i say when i say happy planner rings and then to hole punch everything it's you just use this happy planner punch that you find at michael's so yeah so now what I'm gonna do is kind of walk you through what I have inside my teacher binder um, to kind of show you everything. I'm gonna kind of, so I'm actually not, like I said, I'm not at home this week, so I'm gonna have, have to kind of hold it up and turn the pages as I go. Oh, somebody set, is asking, can you do the assessment binder using those rings? And yes, you totally can. And another thing that's great about these rings is like, let's say next year you want to make a new teacher binder or maybe, you know, a tab falls off or, you know, your dog eats part of it. You can just tear it off and use the rings again next year. 
Oh, Danielle says Happy Planner rings are also sold at Hobby Lobby and maybe Joann's. So that way, you know, teacher coupons are the best. So this is um, kind of how I do my teacher binder. You do it how it works for you um, in your classroom and your school. All right, so inside my teacher binder, teacher binder I always usually keep my to-do list in the front and I think there's like oh like three or four or five different to-do lists included in the teacher binder pack um, so you kind of pick which one works for you um, and just kind of go from there so this is the one that I like just because it has like a to do now things I need to do next week so I don't forget and then kind of um, things at the bottom so maybe I have you know a meeting or um, you can put things that you need to do on what days and then I have my calendar next and so like this is August but let's say August is done you can tear this out and either throw it away or you can put it in the back that way your first the month it is always um, is at the front so you don't have to flip pages like crazy and there is a black and white um, calendar in there too that will match all the other set and then and I um, oh here it is sorry so if you also want a like year at a glance, what you can do is you can open up the PDF file and the calendars are editable too. Forgot, forgot to tell you that. So if you want to type in things into the calendar and then like, you know, holidays or birthdays or whatever it is, you can type it in and then print it and then add to it. Um, but if you want to print like a year at a glance, um, pick, go into Adobe the Adobe file and then there's a little page tab on the left side and then you can select the pages you want to print and then just print them I think it's um what is this 12 to a page and you can just um, customize that and if you guys just let me know in the comments if you need me to do a video on how to print more than one page to more than one um, page to a page <laughs> I guess is what you would call it um and I can make that on um really quick um, tonight or tomorrow and I can pop it in for you guys and then so I have the calendar and then I just have like basic info so like here's my schedule um, you know just all that basic stuff maybe you have like a um, maybe you have um, I don't know just whatever like basic info you have about your class maybe it's like for me it would be like my schedule or um, I don't know just basic stuff because after that I have student info so I have like my class list and again, all these pages are in the teacher binder. And then I have birthdays. And then I have a health alert list. And then I have student services at a glance. And then I have student information. And there is um, a couple different versions of these, like I said. So, or like maybe you get, if you get like a printout from your school or something, with all the parents information on that just hole punch it with the with the hole punch and then just pop it in your binder you don't have to always make everything beautiful and print Pinterest pretty just if it's easier if your school gives you something just pop it in your binder like that too and then there are these blank student checklists I like to keep a couple of them in in my in my teacher binder maybe like you know I need like a permission slip back or maybe I'm collecting money or something and I can just put everybody's name in well, once I get my class list I'll type everybody's name in and keep some of these um, in here and then um, that way I have everybody's name already in and I can just write what it is at the top and then mark as I need it because you know how you need those random lists for like field trip permission forms or you know oh like maybe you're making Christmas gifts and you need to make sure everybody's done all the different parts did they make the present and did they make the card and did they wrap it and things like that so after that I always put my curriculum map and I printed these four to a page you can always print them um, more like si single pages um, but that way I have my curriculum guide with me at all, at all times um, and it's just easy for me to reference when I'm planning um, and my curriculum guide is free. It's in my TPT store, but it has, um, here, I'll give you kind of, if you haven't seen my curriculum map, here's kind of a up close. So I have all the, I have, I have it by month and then by week and kind of like what we're doing for, um, like a theme, a themed, the theme centers and then dramatic play and social skills and science and then a sensory, um, a, an idea for your sensory table. So yeah. So hopefully it makes planning a breeze or a little bit easier for you guys. And then also in my 
um, curriculum guide or book list. And again, I printed these four to a page just to save on ink since they're very colorful. <laughs> um, and they are all clickable. So if you click these in the curriculum guide, it takes you right to Amazon if you want to like see an up, for, up close um, view of the book. Um, but there's a book list for almost everything because sometimes when I, I maybe maybe I have my books at home or maybe you know I'm somewhere else and I'm planning this just kind of gives me a, um, an idea list on some good books to use for each theme these are my first 10 days of lesson plans I it's the same almost every year I tweak them a little bit you know once I get to know the kiddos but typically it's routines it's how to wash your hands how to sit at circle how to do a fire drill, um, all of those things, all those routine-y things, how to line up for snack, how, what's the snack routine, um, you know, what's the smissel look like, um, all of those things, um, how to use a glue stick or whatever it is. Um, so these are actually free on my blog. I, I make up my own curriculum and it's just based on um, various state standards and common core and, well, I tailor it since there's no preschool common core um, except for in New York. Um, they made their own, but, um, so yeah, so it's based off standards and current research. So it's my own curriculum. It's nobody else. <laughs> you guys can use it as much as you want. So yeah, so these lesson plans, I just popped right in. So now I have the first 10 days of school lesson plans done, which is awesome. And there they are. And then I have my typical lesson plans after that. So after that, I have my parent communication piece because we all know we should write down if we're contacting parents or having, I don't, and I'm not going to lie, I don't write down every time I have a conversation with a parent, but if it's a hard conversation or if there's something, you know, you you have that gut feeling if you, when you're having a conversation with a parent, if it's a tricky one or if it's maybe a sensitive subject or maybe you're saying, hey, did you notice this? You have a concern about a kiddo. Just write it down. That way you know you don't want to overwhelm the parent because um, with preschool like we're telling them things for the first time they're hearing some of this stuff for the first time or some like a worry we have or you know a concern so I um, I like to th those are the conversations I track so I don't overwhelm the mom or the dad or the grandma or the grandpa or the aunt or the uncle or whoever whoever's in charge of that kiddo um, I just kind of keep track in here and there are different um, parent contact forms too. Or maybe somebody got hurt, you definitely want to write that down. Like if somebody got injured in your, you know, they skinned their knee on the playground or something. It's always just good to write some of that stuff down just in case. So, and then after that, so after the parent communication section, um, you, I have like planning. So if I'm like sketching out any units, I just kind of have this in here. And sometimes I will sketch out units, um, like I'll put the next three I'm doing because you know how those ideas just pop into your head and like oh I know I'm gonna do this next month oh or you see something great on Pinterest or you see something great you're another teacher's doing I usually have like three going in here on the next three that way I can just pop ideas down as they come or you know those drives to work are always the best time for ideas at least that's how it was for me and then I have a teacher things tab so like a professional development log and my favorite website list and my book wish list and my all the usernames and passwords we have like a bazillion right and with the school a lot of times they're like crazy weird passwords like cprq4 you know things like that so you can write them all down in here <clears throat> and then after that i have i don't know if you can see on the tabs i have a tab for each domain and they're kind of like my, I call them like my inspiration pages. So if there's a new research article that came out that I, or maybe there's something I reference a lot. Maybe there's something in your curriculum or in my curriculum that you refer, reference a lot. Just plop it in here. Just hole punch it with your um, pink hole punch. <laughs> and then just plop it in. That way you have it when you're planning wherever you are. That's why I use the big rings because I, um, these, these for me fill up. Um, as the year goes on more and more as I find things that I'm using and I need to reference and kind of just give me that spark and that inspiration as I'm lesson planning. Like here's the literacy tab and I printed these four to a page. So these are um, when you sign up for my newsletter and if you haven't done that yet you totally should because you get um, all these um, cards for free and they're sent to your email. And um, 
So sign up for my newsletter and this comes to your email for free. But there's a whole bunch of ideas on how to use them in the classroom and I just print them off four to a page to save paper and save ink. And that way if I'm like, oh, wait, I need, I need some, an idea for word work and we're doing transportation. Well, if I have transportation word cards, any of these activities will work. I'll just use the word cards for that theme. And, all, and in all of my theme packs, um, there, um, there are themed word cards. So you can use this for every theme. So, and then these are my word cards and these are a freebie in my TPT store. And these are just the teacher, teacher idea pages. And I just plop these right in too. And then these are, um, the name maps and that, that's a freebie in my store too. And I just plopped these in because name activities are good to do all year it doesn't matter what theme they're always a, if you don't have anything or you can't think of anything a name activity is always an awesome activity to just plop it plop for table time because they'll love it it's their name right <laughs> um so yeah and it, they're great for literacy and then these are um the handouts um that i did when um during the um how to teach letters and sounds without using letter of the week um those are the handouts i have in there and that link is actually at the top. There is a link to all of my Facebook Live, so click on one of the How to Teach Letters and Sounds and you'll find this link. And then, like here's all my stews. So this kind of, um, I just printed them off. A I, I forgot what the max was. I think it's like, I forgot. I can't remember. <laughs> Whatever they, um, the max was per page, I printed all the teacher pages off and I just plopped that in there so I know what um, stews I have for all the different themes. And then for blocks and stem, this is in my stem bundle. Um, and they're actually in each individual stem I can build pack. I just added them this week. They are new, and I printed them two to a page. They are new um, themed um, blocks, um, block themed stem blocks or you could use them um, like in your stem center but they're a prop list and they're um, they're uh, they're a prop list and they have um, which pack they're from so like here are sorry here's the fall it'll tell you right here in the corner which sorry <laughs> which stem um, I can build pack they're from and then it'll give you a prop list and then um, it'll you kind of see it in action in my classroom so, and even if you don't um, own the bundle, you get these for every single theme. So, even if you don't have the I Can Build, I can build cards, um, for if you don't have all of them, you can either grab them or just use this as kind of an idea list for you and then plop up some, you know, just Google images um, to give your kids some STEM, STEM ideas for that theme. And then for social emotional, I reference my green and red choices pack a lot because there's a book list in here. because. We all know we teach behavior all year, right? Like, we don't just teach it at the beginning of the year. We teach it all year long. Because that's, like, what, the base of everything we do? A kiddo is going to struggle if if they can't, you know, if they can't regulate their feelings. And we just, so we, we need to help them with all those things. So, how to make green choices um, pack. And I just printed those off four to a page. And if you own that, make sure you go download that again if you haven't this summer. Because I added a parent note to that. And that's editable as well. And then I also put in, I'm oh, sorry, the, my Calm Down Kit, which also has a parent note. I just put in those teacher pages. Um, so yeah. Lisa, I don't have a superheroes theme. I can add it to my to-do list though. <laughs> and then I have Dramatic Play, which is empty um, right now. And then I have like a My Notes section. And so like maybe, or you can add in like meeting notes here, um, whatever you kind of want. And or like I was at the TPT conference today and I took some notes and it was just nice that I had a notes page in my binder because I just wrote them down in here and I was ready to go and you can always rip them out if you need to or you can just like put them back in or like move them to a different section or something and then at the back I actually have all my TPT all my stuff to keep me organized for TPT um, so if you are on like a curriculum committee or maybe you're on in charge, maybe you're in charge of a committee at your, in your school, like make a, make a divider for that and then pop that in the back. Maybe, um, maybe cause I know, well, at least we did in, um, my district, um, when I taught full day for 12 years for a school district, 
I now teach half day um, in my, um, I have an in-home state licensed um, school. I have um, nine kiddos next year, um, but we had to make growth plans. So, and we had to track it and do data on it and all of that funness, which is so fun, right? It's, it's good, but it's, it's a lot of work. So if you need, maybe, you know, maybe you need to put your growth plan in there because um, every teacher in my district was re required to do one and track it and all of that. So if you have a growth plan or something like that, make a tab for that. Like tailor this for you. Make it work for you. Don't make it work for me. <laughs> make it work um, for you. Would this be for someone who works in daycares or is it really just for teachers? Um, so daycare teachers are teachers too. Like, and you guys are teachers just like I'm a teacher in my preschool so don't think because you work in a daycare you're not a teacher because you are and you're amazing and you are just as important as all of us you are building those kiddos up from the you know from the start like you're their first teacher so you can absolutely make one of these for you guys all of us work so hard whether we're in a daycare or we're a kinder teacher or we're in an in-home teacher, an in-home um, pre preschool teacher. We have ours in our own home, whether we're an assistant or whether we're an OT or a PT or, you know, a speech language pathologist or a preschool teacher or a preschool special ed or pre-K special ed or TK, RK, all the different Ks. Um, all of us are teachers. We all have such important, amazing jobs. So yes, everybody. You, you don't have to make a teacher binder, but yes, you can. everybody needs some kind of organization system to keep them going. So whatever works for you. They're happy planner rings. Um, so people are asking about the rings again. Um, the rings, um, if you go to the top, you can see them on Amazon. Or, and then um, you can also get them at Michael's. Somebody said you can get them at Hobby Lobby and Joanne's fabric store. So use those coupons if you buy them there. And then the whole punch is this pink happy planner whole punch. Make sure you get the pink one because the green one is shorter. The paper clips. So I had these um, really fancy paper clips. Look how fancy they are. They're a paper clip with guess what tied to the top of them. Just ribbon. So if you want to make um, some cute little paper clips for yourself, like a page holder for your lesson plans, just take a paper clip and just put some ribbon at the top. And I, I've done this before when I like for different things so you can use like thicker ribbon it's just the little things that make us happy right so you can use, or you can do it for like a holiday you can do like a Christmas you can tell I've done a couple I have I like doing these right or you can do rainbow so whatever theme you have you can make yourself little cute um cute little paper clip marks um and then they do um like at Michael's and on Amazon I think I linked them at the top they do make like pretty cutesy like um, stickers. So if you are super cutesy and you love stickers, you can add these teacher planner um, teacher stickers um, to your binder if that's what makes you happy. If you don't want to add them, don't. You, I know some people use like washi tape to make their planners. Honestly, I I bought these to show you guys. Um, so I honestly, I'll probably use them once and I guarantee you they will sit in my closet. <laughs> um, but yeah, so yeah, and you can use your Michael's coupons for these too. So they, they're super cute if, if that's what you love. If you don't love stickers, then don't use those. And there's also, they make all kinds of like accessories for the Happy Planner. Um, like they make a whole bunch of like just plain paper. They make like fancy pen holders and things like that. But um, honestly, I just bought this to show you guys. I'll probably just print off things from my planner pack and I might even take this stuff back to Michael's um, since I just wanted to show you guys. But you can buy all the pretty happy planner stuff. They have like expensive paper clips and things, but you guys can just make your own. And then um, my new favorite pen I wanted to tell you about just because we, we are all teachers and we love pens. So I bought these new, they're like a Gelosity pen and they're so cool. You can get them at Target, um, but they, I'll kind of write with them really quick. Oh, not on that page. But they write and they don't like, um, what do you call it? They don't like bleed or anything, so they're really nice. If you want, if you need a new fun pen, these Gelosity ones are awesome. Have an amazing day. Talk to you soon.